right, hello and welcome. I'm Zach Lane from Community Health, bringing you our Unity Through Community video blog, because your health is our mission. This week, we're joined again by Jason Kiker, our licensed clinical social worker at Community Health Rutland. Jason, it's good to see you again. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for having me back, Zach. I really appreciate it. So last time we, we talked, you mentioned a grounding technique for ways to deal with anxiety, especially with everything going on with COVID. So we really liked that. We figured we'd take some time to dive into that a little deeper, go through step-by-step, step, use some examples. That sounds good. Absolutely. And uh, so the grounding technique we're going to be talking about today, it's called the 54321 technique. And it's offered through the cognitive behavioral therapy strategies. And grounding is really, it's an effective way to calm anxiety for an individual, um, whether they're experiencing panic attack or they're just experiencing an increase in race and thoughts. Basically, what happens is through the grounding, you're going to create a sense of comfort because it starts to orient you to where you are, what's going on around you, and it helps really sort of put you in that situation, and it helps you feel more in control of the situation. Um, and if you combine this with any various anxiety attack breathing techniques, such as uh, just breathing slowly into the mouth, exhaling through the nose, um, if you incorporate the two together, you should be able to really kind of bring down the anxiety. And for the 5 4 3 two, 1 technique, I know last time I kind of just whipped through it, but I'll give it a little more detail today. Um, so when you're describing it, you're going to do five things you can see, four things you can feel, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. And when you're describing these things, it's, it's kind of challenging at first because a person might just whip through them. So they might be like, well, I see a telephone, I see a wallet, I see this. What you really want to do is take the time to be able to also describe the items you're seeing. So for example, if I were to describe, you know, I'll just show you this phone. If I was to describe this phone, I might say, you know, I see a phone, it's got like a blue cover to it. It's got an Apple logo on it. Um, it's got kind of some scratches on the case and uh, looks like it's got a camera up here. Basically what I tell individuals is you really want to describe it to in enough detail so a person who would lack that sense would be able to understand what you're talking about. Uh, so for example, for the five things you can see, you're gonna act like you're describing it to a person who is blind. Now you don't wanna go ad nauseum down to everything like, okay, you know, I see a scratch here and there and there, but just enough to sort of occupy the mind. So as you do this, you go through the list, five things you can see, four things you can physically feel, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. Now taste is sometimes hard to identify, so what you can do is sometimes you can think about what your favorite taste is. So for example, I'm a, I'm a big ice cream buff. I love ice cream. So I might think of uh, an old favorite of mine's Chunky Monkey and think about, you know, the banana flavor and really kind of how that tastes. Um, however you approach the goal or however you approach the strategy, the goal is to identify elements in the world around you. So that way you're really kind of refocusing on what's going on around you and you're recentering yourself. And that will help make an individual feel more in control. Um, and, and like I said, the thoughts might still be there, but that sudden rush of anxiety should have dissipated by the time you get through the whole process of the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, the one other thing I tell people is this is a lot of times people will think this is a very long process. They hear the, the exercise and they're like, oh, this might take me too long. In reality, it doesn't take more than five six minutes and you can do it anywhere you want. You don't even need to be speaking out loud. You can be doing it in your head and it really works well when you're using it in your head and you're in an environment that might be stressful or overwhelming for you or if you're experiencing panic attack to be able to do this in your head. Um, but the one way I always sort of trade that off to is this is for individuals, if they think about the amount of time they might give to that anxious thought or to the panic, that's much longer than five minutes a lot of times. So just kind of substitute that and say, okay, let me try this strategy. Let me try the five, four, three, two, one strategy. See if that reduces the urgency of the anxiety. See if that grounds me. I always think it's a good idea and it's a good first step to managing that anxiety. So uh, that's why I really advocate strongly for the five, four, three, two, one strategy. And uh, like I said, that's, that's what it encompasses. I hope that's been helpful for you guys. Yeah, that's great. That seems like with how it seems like it might take a long time, but feel like once you start to do it multiple times, like 
you'll get more experience at naming those five things, four things. And then it, yeah. I feel like the habit as well might help because it's, you know, something familiar at that point, help you ground as well there. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, so to recap, uh, so it's five, four, three, two, one. And then I really liked your point of trying to describe it to someone who doesn't know what it is. I think that's a good way to sort of balance, don't want to spend too much time doing it, but get that right level of detail. That, that's exactly it. And I mean, the, the wonderful thing about it is, like I said, it, it's able to be used anywhere. That's the great thing. You can use it anywhere, anytime. And, and I really advocate to go through the whole five, four, three, two, one, not stopping, but just getting through the whole list. You know, one last thing I forgot to tell you is I've worked with an individual and they had sort of really enmeshed themselves in this. And the longest that I've ever seen it take was, and I, I recorded this actually, was nine minutes and 52 seconds. And this was an individual who was doing it in nature. They really enjoyed the practice and they really used it as a common strategy. So hmm. that's what I saw. Great. Uh, anything else you want to add or? Uh, no, not really. I think that, you know, like I said, just if the person still has the anxious thought, that's common. But it's the urgency that kind of dissipates. So that's that's what we're aiming for: is just to be able to ground the person and bring them back into uh, into reality, if you will. All right, Jason, great talking with you again. Um, you. And then thank you to everyone for watching uh, this latest episode of Community Health's video blog. Again, if you're interested in learning more about our programs or services, you can check out our website at chcr.org. Community Health, we're health is our mission. Thank you. Thank you, Zach.